Yay! So there's a bear with a beak. Why is there? Oh, a bear? Okay, so. La so I I've been talking to Jackie about being on the show for a while, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break in just a second to to tweet that we're that we're online. So. I was like, well, if you have any any like art or visual elements that you want to want me to put on the stream, I can do that. And it, it's very cool when the way people talk kind of comes through like the the text medium that you're using, <laughs> because the response to that question was, do you want my bird with arms album? <laughs> that is exactly and, the inflection. And, and then I was. My response was like, dot, 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 yes. <laughs> so, so that's what we, we, we it's, a, it's a combination of, uh, of, of two different things. It is Jackie's wonderful work with Birds with Arms. And when I do tweet this out, I will include our good friend Abby because I know she loves this. And then it's also her portrait work uh, that, that's going to be on the stream. So I, I will, we'll probably get to your, we will get to your art at some point, but this isn't going to be like a, like a strict interview kind of thing. It's just going to be, we're going to be talking about everything other than, than Orange is the New Black. Sounds good. Good to me. Okay, I'm going to post them on the Facebooks as well. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm for some reason logged into the uh, Glip Shark Twitter. This is dangerous. Uh-oh. You're not always logged into it? I just switch back and forth. Did you post any pics? You might want to check the pics you may have posted, just to be no, sure. No nudes. <laughs> also, hi, streamers. Hello, all, streamer. All two of you, no doubt. <laughs> Uh -huh. There, there's a number of streamers. It's higher than zero. I'll give you that. Oh god! Ooh. Lisa just fed me a uh, a mug cake. It was mm -hmm. delicious. Was it chocolate? Yes. Mm. No, now it's all over me. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Also, I must have married the only woman on the planet who does not enjoy chocolate. I'm not a, the biggest fan of chocolate, but I've grown to appreciate it in some ways. But usually, okay. I'm that weird person that says, get me vanilla, and then nobody trusts me anymore. <laughs> She's a communist. <laughs> get her. <laughs> Actually, vanilla is not without its charm. It's got that spiciness to it, that sweet. It's, it's a very complex flavor. Right, exactly. The way I see it is if you think vanilla is plain, like if you associate vanilla with plain, then you just haven't had vanilla. You've just had plain. Yeah. A French vanilla I like, too. Yeah. Good old hazelnut. I, that's my answer to everything. Coffee needs hazelnut. <laughs> Bread needs hazelnut spread. I made a Taxes? Hazelnut. Throw some hazelnuts. Uncle Sam won't know the difference. <laughs> I made a hazelnut cake a few years ago with like this hazelnut glaze on top. That was fun times. Ooh, that sound good. Yeah. That could be the perfect landscape for my long-term project of a bear where uh, it's a recreation of the Battle of Antietam where the Union soldiers are played by uh, gummy, gummy bears and the Confederates are played by Teddy Grahams. That sounds awesome, and I want to see that so bad. Yeah, it's, it's been, I've been thinking about doing it for a couple of years now. I missed the boat this birthday, but I think maybe next birthday I'll pull the trigger. Sounds good. Yeah. I just heard your phone go off. Ha ha. Oh, yeah, that was the, uh, okay, the mention so by Glib Shark. Before we get started, I will say that, and this is a tiny, tiny little thing. So I'm pretty sure at least two-thirds of the panel watches various CW shows, like, like Arrow and The Flash and more recently. <coughs> Supernatural. <coughs> Supernatural and, and iZombie and all of those. One thing that I have noticed in a lot of shows is that when characters' phones go off, it's no longer like a, like a, like a ringtone or whatever. You hear the vibration going off instead, mm -hmm. which is really cool because like, I, I think most people these days run their phone on vibrate. Yeah. Do, do, do you feel that's, uh, that's accurate or is it just me being insane? It's weird that you actually bring this up because earlier today, I think I was actually watching the Veronica Mars movie, and somebody's phone started buzzing, and it was so accurate and so perfect that I was searching around for my phone, trying desperately to answer this call that was obviously coming in. But 
just wasn't because it was on TV. I do this too. Lousy TV, making me think people love me and want to reach out, reach out to me when they don't. Oh, Shanga. <laughs> Thank you for your pity. Ah. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm Jonathan. And we, oh, there we go. And we are Glib Shark. Tonight we have Jackie the Robot, uh, RoosterTeeth.com, site admin, legacy forum, uh, legacy forum, uh, legacy art forum moderator, a uh, longtime member of the Nerdist community, and uh, just all around awesome person. Uh, we'll talk to her in just a bit, and if you want to join, the number to call is 215 486 2125 or Skype Jenga Ship. Uh, but first, as always, we have the lovely, the talented, the amazing Roadblock doing more introductions. Uh, I wish I could say I had something in This Week in Geek, but I don't. What I do have is a random Hearthstone segment. Yes, I have recently got back into Hearthstone, the card game, the electronic card game. And I will tell you, it is awesome, especially now that it's on my phone, because I can play it anytime I want. But there is a new play mode that is been uh, released in the last couple of weeks. It is called Tavern Brawl, and it is a new way to play your friends or the public. So, uh, so like with other card games, in Hearthstone you build a deck and then you play people. In Tavern Brawl, the rules are a little different. Either you don't get to play your deck, you get to play a pre-made deck of a boss or something else, or there are special rules. And I gotta say, these last couple of weeks of Hearthstone have been really awesome. The first uh, Tavern Brawl week was a boss named Nefarian, and for you World of Warcraft players, these names are going to sound familiar. For me, they're just Hearthstone people, because I didn't play World of Warcraft, so there. And so one of them is Nefarian versus uh, Ragnaros, and that was the first one, and it was really cool. Nefarian was a very fast, got lots of stuff out. Ragnaros was much slower, but better prepared to handle the onslaught that Nefarian was going to give him. Uh, this last week was Banana Brawl. Any time a minion died, you got a banana card in your hand. And those banana cards would do tiny little things that were one-cost spells. So it, I, I've had a lot of fun playing that. And even though we're not sponsored by Hearthstone and probably never will be, I encourage you to play and fight me, bro, because Hearthstone is awesome. Well said. The world is indeed a strange place. If you have a fact you want read live and on the air, you can send it to Lauren at obocrazy.com and she will read it whenever she's around. If she's not around, we may hold her for a week where she is. And while you're at it, go to our website, which is glibshark.com, full of past episodes of Glibshark, Classic Jenga Jam, all-time podcast, and just random stuff we feel like posting. But I did forget to mention Jackie's website, nerdsandbabeland.com. Or yep. one of the websites you're affiliated with. What is it, like eight or nine now? Like, at least a dozen. My name's just all over the place. I need to just do a wipe someday. Just get off the grid. <laughs> <laughs> like a Wilson Fisk? <laughs> yeah. Man, so it's been a while since you've been on the show proper, I think. It has. It Honestly, I think it's been since the days of, like, Stripper Elf. I don't know if it's been that long. That was like <laughs> seven or eight years ago. No, it might be that long, Jack. All right, so it, I committed a faux pas. I think this was a couple of years ago. So we were talking in one of the various bar threads about art, and I had like mentioned, hey, oh, hey, let's go ahead and, and have some of these artists on the show. And I kind of forgot to mention Jackie, and she kind of got a little pissed at me. <laughs> so this was a couple of years ago, and, and, and everything's cool now. Everything's good. No, there's, there's nothing bad there. And, uh, and, and we, we have since had adventures in New York and adventures of the place. Well, I think just New York, actually. Oh, but, man. Uh, but, but there will be more adventures. There's adventures upcoming. So really looking forward to that. But, uh, but yes, I think, this, I think it might have been that long, Jack, <laughs> is the point. Wow. Seems like just yesterday we yeah. were poking fun at people for being vapid or not vapid. Or the using thing the is, word. it was just yesterday, just not on here. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, we interact a lot like on the, on the traditional social media, but not so much on the Rooster Teeth. That, that, a lot of that's my fault. And I think it's just cool because uh, recently a lot of our usual players have been busy and it's given us a really good opportunity to, to I don't want to say get around to these people because that's not quite it, but the people we've always meant to have on but just haven't, 
I, I, it, this is this is the time to do it, and and Jackie has been one of the beneficiaries, and 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 it's cool because you've caught us at a time where, like, like I said, we're not really doing strict interviews anymore. We're we're having people on and just kind of talking about whatever, and, and and for me, that's a lot more interesting than just uh, question one, answer the question, please. <laughs> question two, answer this question. It's definitely more laid back. I, I dig the new vibe. That's very cool. Yeah, and it's more fun, less uh, preparation on our part, less uh, having to do things. The th I think the episodes hold up better because it's not tied to some temporal event. Right. Yeah, and I, I owe you a debt of gratitude. I mean, you've been talking about this for years, but I finally started listening to Nerdist. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and it's like hard. I don't listen to every episode because they're like like 80 come out a week. But um, but whenever there's an interview that I, I see someone I know or like sounds really interesting or someone I want to learn more about, I'll go ahead and listen to it. And I learned a lot about, uh, what's your face, uh, Kristen Ritter, who's going to be playing uh, Jessica Jones in the new Marvel adaptation, because she was on maybe six or seven months ago. And I, I, wasn't on, I, was, I didn't hear about her at the time. I'm thinking, no, she seems really cool. Like, I, all I knew her from was Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23 and one episode of The Blacklist. And I'm listening to her, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then the one week later, they cast her as Jessica Jones. I'm like, that makes sense. I'm good with that. Whereas if I hadn't heard the interview, I'd be like, oh, no, she's all wrong for it. She's way too tall, way too pretty, way too supermodelly. Jessica Jones is more of a, you know, sort of, you know, beat up by life kind of character. But I could see Kristen Ritter doing that. And Allison Janney was on recently, so I listened to that one. And she's, like, one of my favorites from back in the day. Yeah, Kristen Ritter is a, she's an interesting person. I've actually followed her on a, a couple of social media outlets. And she always has some pretty interesting things to report. And personally, I am still angry that The Bee in Apartment 23 was canceled. It was a wonderful show, and somebody should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, it's like one of those things where the networks just don't know how to market something effectively. Like, Better Off Ted was an amazing show, too, but they only gave that, like, two seasons. Mm -hmm. And then just about anything that Brian Fuller touches his name to seems to die before it's time. Yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen with American Gods, though. Uh, fingers crossed. I... Thank you, by the way, for letting me borrow that, I think, six years ago, maybe seven. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing how, how, that, how that shakes up. Because, you know, Fuller has a pretty good track record with like that super, natural, supernatural kind of stuff, if you yeah. follow my meaning. What's it called? Magical realism? Like, not quite the same thing, though, but kind of the same vibe. That's a good term for it. That is what it is. Yeah. 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 Do you know who they... Did they do any casting on that yet, or no? I don't think so, but you know what? We've got the internet right here. Let's take a look. This is true. <laughs> to the internet. While y'all are looking at that, I will say that I have not read American Gods, and I'm really looking forward to the show. Uh, do, you do you guys feel like that's something I should go out and read, or should I just wait for the show? It's sort of like the Game of Thrones question. It's like, uh, the, the first two seasons at least were so good and so faithful to the books that you really didn't need to read the books, but there's like enrichment there? I, I don't know. IDK, tell me what to do. That's really hard to uh, tell before the show actually comes out. You know, you're not going to see how close it is to the book, but the book isn't really that long. If I recall, it's like 600 pages and it's phenomenal. It's, uh, it's something that I've heard a couple of people complain that it takes them a little bit to get into, like, you know, a few chapters to really grab their attention. For me, it got me right, right from the start, and it was, um, I think, probably the second Neil Gaiman book I ever read. And it's just, it's a powerhouse. It, it's, one of the, it's one of my favorite stories that I've ever read, personally. So you could probably get through it pretty quickly, and it's absolutely worth it. So I would definitely say read it before the show comes out. Yeah, it's only one book, too, so it's helpful. Yeah. Right, and it just occurs to me that I like being on the side of the snobby book readers, <laughs> so that that does appeal to me, so like I, I'm definitely down with that. I remember when, what was it, Sci-Fi did their Harry Dresden series, and I, I'm pretty sure I'd already read like the first Harry Dresden book and hated it, and I was just like, oh wow, so this show somehow made this book so much worse. That's amazing. That's rough. In that vein, what was your most disappointing experience with a, a book-to-movie translation? Okay, so this is going to come off the wrong way because it, it, so, it's a, it was a not sure if want, but I ended up appreciating both. Jurassic Park. Huh. Like, what I was expecting from Jurassic Park, the movie, was 
a more faithful adaptation of the book. And while Jurassic Park, the movie, captured the spirit of the book, it was a very different experience. And oh, and, and I ended up appreciating, appreciating it. Yeah, actually, can I change my answer? I want to change my answer. Oh <laughs> Go my God, for it. it. Uh, Starship Troopers. <laughs> right. Starship Troopers is an amazing book. It's dudes in, in mechanized suits dropping from orbit and killing aliens. And, and there's other themes and stuff that, that go along with it, but, but that's its base. And, it's so it, and that has been done so many times, and, and it's been done well since. Like, ODSTs are essentially cap troopers. You have Spartans in armor. You've had Iron Man. You've had all this other stuff. And the movie for Starship Troopers, just dudes in helmets with guns. What wah Yeah. I, I was incredibly disappointed because... In my mind's eye, I was like, okay, they, they very vividly describe the process by which a trooper is deployed to a planet, and it's very cool. They go through all the training, they go through the different types of suits. It, it, it was awesome. And then in Starship Troopers, it's like, hey, yeah, these are cap troopers. And I'm like, but why are they called cap troopers? They don't, they don't come down in caps. <laughs> cap stands for capsule. I don't. Do caps like hats? I don't get it. Anyway. How about you, Jack? That's a very good question. If we're talking about um, comic books, I would say Watchmen. Only because it was too faithful. It didn't take any liberties. It was just like a scene-for-scene, shot-for-shot remake, which changed the most important things about it without adding anything new worth worthwhile. I mean, you don't really need to have seen the movie. It was basically a waste of my time and my money. And it's different than V, where they changed around some of the thematic stuff. Mm -hmm. And basically any Alan Moore film work that's been adapted to, uh, to film has been a disappointment. But I think really Watchmen was the war because it was the best book, that he, in my opinion, that he, that he wrote. As far as uh, book books go, that's a very good question. I mean, maybe anything about John Grisham. Um, like, but the, the thing is, the John Grisham books, looking back, weren't that great. So, I mean, I don't know that there's much place to go. I wish I told his books. The last couple of Dr. Seuss films that were made into films were pretty terrible. <laughs> That's true. That Just is. everyone. There hasn't been a good Dr. Seuss book, a film from based on the, one of his books. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go with Dr. Seuss. There you go. For me, I think it's I Am Legend. That was... Oh, enough. God, yes. Oh, they they <laughs> yes. changed the entire third act of that, didn't they? Yeah, they changed a lot of things about it. They made it... I mean, the book I Am Legend, uh, Richard Matheson really delves into uh, how tortured this man is by being alone by being the last person on earth and listening to his former friends family and his wife outside taunting him night after night so that really really gave you an emotional connection with that main character that was never never the fuck in the movie like this was just will smith wandering around a post-apocalyptic world with a dog and i mean i guess that's fun that's somebody's cup of tea but it's it wasn't i am legend it was it was pretty lame yeah, it's like you took some of the basic details of something and made it into something completely different. And I think it's one of those deals where the finished movie, even though it was missing a lot of that stuff, could have easily recaptured the, the spirit of the book if it had just stuck with the ending that was filmed and included in the DVD extras, apparently. Yeah. Like, they had an ending where... Will Smith gives up the vampire daughter to to the dad, and there's an understanding, and and that was, it it wasn't all of the things, but it was one of the big things of the book that these aren't monsters. Will Smith is the monster, right? And and instead, it's just like, oh no, Will Smith's going to blow himself up because tattoo law, and it's like, uh, but you had it, <laughs> you had the right ending, and you just for some reason, chose not to go with it. I, 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 sometimes movies are, are really infuriating like that. Oh, another one, World War Z. I haven't even seen that. I heard it was terrible. It's pretty bad. It, it, okay, actually, I, I'll give it this. It's a solid like 60%, maybe 50 What it did really, really well is there are some scenes with some genuine tension where like, they're trying to do something and there are zombies in the way. And they did an excellent job of crafting the scene so that you're just on the edge of your seat. 
and for about 10, 15 minutes, you forget how awesome World War Z the book was and how shitty World War Z the movie was. Lisa's <laughs> raising her hand like she remembers how awesome the book was. Oh, so Lisa loves the movie and hates the book. Mm. Oh. Oh, well, that's interesting. I so, like, um, I've never actually read the book. I've only ever seen the movie. The movie was acceptable to me. Like, oh, God. I guess... you need to re the book is very different. Okay. And it's, the book is actually a lot easier to get through because it is essentially an anthology. So you can read a few short stories of, of people and their experiences and then maybe go do something else and then come back to it. It's basically a book you could read on the pooper over a few weeks and, and, and really get through. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fair assessment. <laughs> okay, so we have, so Jack, the means by which our audience engages us is, uh, is growing. I just got a, a Facebook message from one of our good friends, uh, uh, Carly Hayden, and she asks, what about Ender's, Ender's Game? Ender's Game, I just saw this in the chat. I, you know, I'm not the biggest Orson Scott Card fan to begin with. So if one of his works gets butchered, it's almost like a win in my book. Does that make sense? It does. I, I get what you're saying, but I did like, like his politics, his personal politics aside. I liked Ender's Game, the book. It w it was an extremely engaging book, and it it again, if the movie had just, the movie was bad in that it was trying to be a cliff notes of the book, but without any of the spirit, and and I think that's the difference between. I, I know I was just railing on Jurassic Park, but but like Jurassic Park, the movie understood that it couldn't be a faithful adaptation of the book. So what they did is they took the, the elements that made Jurassic Park Jurassic Park, this man versus nature uh, uh, story and, and all of that, and condensed it and made a movie. So you have a movie experience that's really awesome, and then you have a book experience that really, that's really awesome. With Ender's Game, since it tried to do so, man, so much stuff almost by rote from the book, it missed that spirit. And it just didn't have that spark that could have made a good movie. And it's one of those deals where I'm not sure that Ender's Game really lends itself to that because the devil is in the details. Like, it, it is a book that really relies on the minutia and, and the little things in it to, to create this, this whole. So would it have better served as a TV-like series rather than a movie? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, Watchmen would have definitely been. That's exactly what I was thinking when you were uh, saying that. Is Watchmen... Jack, you're absolutely right that it was a little bit too true to the book and didn't take any creative liberties there, but it also felt like they were shoving so much into such a short period of time. And I know that... the whole pirate thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I heard that was actually turned into a separate project, but hmm. I, I haven't looked into it personally. Yeah, Gerard Butler narrates it, and it's a DVD extra. Oh, okay. Is it any good? Uh, it's... it's <laughs> It's basically pretty faithful to the to the story in the uh, in the book. All right, so I've already wrote, read Watchmen a few times. I don't need to go and seek that out. Then. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, Not unless you're a big Gerard Butler fan. Yeah. And I know that the recent Daredevil adaptation was probably better served by being a TV series rather than than a movie. The world they created, I think, was was couldn't have been captured in two hours. Yeah. That nor was... would you, yeah. Nor would you want to, because now you have the opportunity to bring in more stuff. Uh, the implication is that next season we're getting the Punisher. Yeah, that's easily the best uh, Daredevil adaptation that has been made to date. Easily, yeah. like well, by far. I mean, not much competition. There's Ben Affleck, and then his appearance cameo in The Incredible Hulk thirty years ago. Yeah, it's pretty much all the Daredevil you get. But, uh, but I mean. Punisher, though, is the fourth time the charm. I mean, Dolph Lundgren couldn't do it. Thomas Jane didn't do it. Ray Stevenson couldn't do it. Are we finally going to see, like, a, an interesting Punisher adaptation? Well, you mean an interesting Punisher ad, uh, adaptation that's not Laundry Day? <laughs> or Dirty Laundry, I'm sorry? Touche. For those who don't know, there was a short that came out a few years ago that featured Thomas Jane as a ostensibly homeless dude doing his laundry and there are a couple of pieces of laundry that have white skulls on them and he like foils a burglary or something I don't know he beats up some guys and almost gets shot and 
it, it doesn't directly, like, I, I think the Punisher symbol comes up once, but it never actually says that dude is the Punisher or, or that guy is Frank Castle. It's just heavily, heavily implied. And then that filmmaker made the Power Rangers short that came out, I think, I want to say earlier this year or last year. Oh, this is the same guy. The same guy, yeah. Is this kind of like how Chris Claremont and whatever artist he was working with on X Men would always draw in like a super, Superman and Lois Lane into the X Men comics without actually saying who they are? No, uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That that seems like you're the expert on that. Yeah, I've been uh, want, want, listening to a podcast called Rachel and Miles Explain the X Men. Well, of course, Explain is X hyphen P L A I N pun. But uh, it's just great. They just go over. They're just reviewing the entire run of X Men, including New Mutants and uh, an X Factor. And they're only in the '80s right now, so the '80s is really just a wonderful place to be. And they've just gotten past Secret Wars too, which is like one of the most reviled, like uh, Hasbro y, GI Joe y kind of storylines, where it was blatantly made to sell toys. That's rough. Yeah, yeah, but it's fun because there's just a sort of fast pace between them. They're they're longtime fans, and it's kind of cool to learn about the New Mutants. I didn't really know much about like that comic. I knew about the X-Men, of course, and their history, but, you know, Mirage and uh, Magic and all them, not so much. Apparently they were like the Teen Titans of their time. Huh. So, Jonathan, I have to ask you, have you seen Jurassic World? I have seen Jurassic World. And how do you, how do you feel about that, considering your feelings about Jurassic Park? I, I, I finally saw it after a couple of weeks, and... I will say this, it starts off extremely strong because it, ta it basically grabs any feels you might have about Jurassic Park and just doesn't let go for like the first 20 minutes. There's the swelling Jurassic Park theme, there's the, the overview of the park. It's very, very cool. The middle of the movie flounders a bit because you've kind of got a bunch of stuff going on and the characters really aren't likable and, the and then finally Chris Pratt and the Raptors show up and then it starts getting a bit bender, a bender. <laughs> I have robots on the brain. <laughs> and I wonder why. And uh, it gets better. And then the ending is amazing. The ending is one of the most metal endings I've ever seen. It like, really if is. <laughs> you like were to ask 10 year old or uh, I guess 11 or 12 year old me who had just read Jurassic Park. Hey, how would you end the movie? I not even that wildly tiny mind could have come up with what we actually got, which was fucking incredible. It Wait, was. So, so is, like, le writer of Axe Cop good? Uh, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, well, I don't know if you know if you're familiar with the whole concept of Axe Cop. Basically, it's, like, this uh, story where it's drawn by this 22-year-old and, like, written by a five, his five-year-old brother. So it just gets outstandingly ridiculous. If there's a, it's a FX series, something like that, or... Or Fox had it on for a little while. And Nick Offerman does the voice of Axe Cop now. That sounds fun. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, that makes me sad I didn't watch it. Last weekend when I was in Buffalo, I went, well, I guess it was two weeks ago at this point, I went to see, we had flipped a coin. It was either going to be Jurassic World or Inside Out. And Inside Out won, which I'm kind of fine with. I, ironically, I was the one who wanted to see Inside Out. She was the one who wanted to see Jurassic World. And we ended up seeing Inside Out, and that was really good. Yeah, like, the reason why I hadn't seen Jurassic World yet was because I first saw, um, I'd seen uh, Inside Out uh, the week before this last weekend, and then the week before that we saw Spy, which both were amazing movies for very, very different reasons. And, and then we saw Jurassic World last weekend. Essentially, what we had done is uh, we went ahead and tried one of those uh, uh, Escape the Room puzzles. Oh, cool. uh, me and a yeah. group of friends. We were five minutes from the solution. We had, we had done the thing but hadn't worked out the code. And, and then we ran out of time. So we got close and we're really looking forward to trying it again. Then we got Vietnamese sandwiches and we were like, well, we could do this one thing. But this one thing is really, really, really popular right now. So it would be like several hours before we could even like get in. Or we could go see Jurassic World. And two of the people I, with, I, I was with really like dinosaurs one is a museum essentially a museum sciences person and the other is a micro paleontologist nice so it, at their core they love dinosaurs so we went to go see it and and they loved it it was it was great and and like i said the best part about that movie is how it ends yeah. i've actually seen jurassic world twice now 
Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was in Los Angeles at the uh, at Overkill's pre E3 party, and uh, the guys at Overkill, we went to dinner uh, the last night that we were there, and one of them said, "Okay, I'm not I'm not ready to call it quits. Let's all go see Jurassic World. There's a Chinese theater right there." So it was phenomenal. We saw it in uh, the, at the IMAX. Um, I'm still shocked that. Bryce Dallas Howard wore heels through that entire thing, and I don't know when she had time to touch up her eyeliner, but I guess she was looking pretty banging at the end. But seeing those 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 damn dinosaurs at the end, like I came home and told my husband, "We have to go see Jurassic World in the theaters because you're you're going to be very disappointed if we watch if we wait and watch it at home and we just watch it on our normal boring TV here and you don't see this." Freaking phenomenal dinosaur fight in the theaters. So we actually went to see Inside Out on Sunday, and of course it was absolutely sold out everywhere, forever, all the time. So, <laughs> and uh, Jurassic World just happened to be starting in 10 minutes, and we're like, okay, let's go see that. And there was maybe half a dozen other people in the theater, but he loved it, and it, I mean, it still kind of held up the dinosaur fights, that is. Yeah. Storyline, terrible. Okay, so. Terrible story. It- so if you haven't seen Jurassic World, uh, go ahead and fast forward the podcast. Let's say okay, I four minutes. World. Should I fast forward the podcast or come back in five Just, minutes? You know, plug your ears and plug your ears for real a little quick. bit. Because we're All gonna right. there's gonna be some major geeking out here. All right. Okay. Well, are yeah. we ready? Let's go. All right. Go. Oh my god! It was oh incredible. God. And then oh, oh my god. The, with the flare, and she's just running down there with the flare, and the and the t- oh man, oh man, Dino it's, Bros, like so like cool. when they're when Blue and uh, and Owen are facing off, and he's like, "That's how it is," and and Blue turns around and and yelps at the uh, at the Indominus, and then the Indominus is like, "No, you're gonna do this," and Blue is like, "I don't wanna." The Indominus <laughs> is like, "You're gonna do this," and then he's like, "Fuck you, we're gonna we stick with Owen," and then that that happened, and that was awesome, and I felt bad. When when uh when Delta and Echo died, and but and on the I, grill, oh my god! <laughs> oh, but that, okay, that was a pretty that was a pretty uh, great way to go out. Yeah, but that was a boss death there. Then when when the T Rex, who someone pointed out, is the T Rex from Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, it is. He's got the scars and everything. Yeah. So when that fight happens, and then Blue comes back and helps with the fight. Oh my god! I was like geeking out so bad, and then at the end. I honestly thought they were gonna touch nuzzles and be friends. <laughs> I was like, really? I, I that would have been totally ridiculous, but I I was kind of hoping for that, and I was just like, Dino Bros. I thought it was hilarious that they would just, you know, the the big sea dinosaur. I forget uh, the name of the dinosaur comes yes. up and swallows the Indominus, and the other two, like Blue and the T Rex, just kind of look at each other, and they basically did a dinosaur version of, eh, good enough. And walk away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like, you did, you did good, little dino bro. And then, the, and then Blue's like, you did good, big dino bro. And then they're lo- they just like walk away. I, like, I did like how, so I, I, I just recently started playing Borderlands. And I beat, finally beat Borderlands 2. Nice, and nice. so the part where Brick is like, don't look like the explosion. You'll, you'll be more badass. And, he, and then you look away, it explodes. Like, oh, you didn't look at the explosion. You're a badass. There's a <laughs> moment when, like, after the helicopter goes down and Indominus, like, turns around right before the, ex- the helicopter explodes. I'm like, oh, my God, the Indominus is a badass. Total badass. <laughs> oh, I, man. I, I jumped I out also... of the Jurassic World spoilers into the Borderlands 2 spoilers. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it's a very minor spoiler. I no, did okay. like how everyone hated the Indominus Rex name. Like, yeah. every time it was brought... Because that was my first, like, reaction to it. I'm like, the Indominus Rex? That sounds stupid. And then every character in the movie had this exact same reaction. I thought that was great. Yeah, that was great. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard saying, well, I'll try to listen to a four-year-old say the scientific name, and Owen being like, listen to you say it. That was honestly one of my favorite parts. Just that stupid line. I just <laughs> loved it. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna warp back to non spoilers here. So, uh, but that that was. Oh my god, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Related to Borderlands, though, have you gotten the Tiny Tina DLC? I did, and I I've seen the cinematics for it. I I know kind of how it starts, and I would like to play it sometime. 
but uh, but we're in kind of the Borderlands Two low right now. I thought I honestly thought we were going to play Borderlands Two for a little bit longer because we we beat the game and then we ran into one of the raid bosses. We're like, oh, we got to level up to kill this guy, and then we never did. Like mm. we we went back to Destiny and Hearthstone. So. Right. Maybe one of these days we can come back and revisit it because I would I would actually like to play through the uh, the the bunkers and badasses DLC. Um, I can absolutely tell you that you're gonna love the Tiny Tina one a lot more. Do you know the whole basis for it? Yeah, it's it's bunkers and badasses. It's like D and D, right? Yeah, they're yeah they're totally playing D and D. And I like how in the video, she's like, "Oh, we're we're just waiting until Roland gets here," and yeah. then like Lilith is like, "Tina." Aww. You you remember what happened, right? And Tina's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. All right, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob, if you haven't played that, I don't know if you've played Borderlands at all, have you? Jacob? J- Jenga. Jenga. Oh, J- I'm about to say, I haven't played Borderlands at all. No. Yeah, there's a, uh, a DLC that's based all around Dungeons and & Dragons, and it's it's the best thing that has ever happened, pretty much. <sighs> Interesting. To check it out. It's the best thing that's happened since that community episode that was based on Dungeons and Dragons. The first one, because the second one was totally forced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how could they had David Cross and they still managed to mess it up? Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I like that episode. I I rented it to Jonathan. Jonathan isn't a big fan of community, so he didn't really care for it. I mean, it's it's one of those deals where I haven't seen a whole lot of community and. I'm sure I would like it if I got into it. It's just not not high on the watch list. Like, I would say that Always Sunny is probably higher. And I still haven't really gotten, gotten around to watching all of that. Like I've, seen, like, I've seen bits of episodes of Always Sunny. And then I've seen even less bits of Community. And, and both are funny for different reasons. But uh, it's just one of those things where I haven't, I haven't gotten a chance to, to get around to it. And especially with more stuff coming out, like BoJack Horseman Season 2, I'm, I'm yeah... Have you seen the Christmas special, Jonathan? That is, that's the one where it's the horsing around episode, right? It's yeah, pretty much. I have not. I, I keep every time I sit down to watch it, something comes up. Oh man! I get it. I get an invite to go do something else. I only watched it recently. I didn't even know it existed until I I, I, think I googled Bulljack Horseman just on a whim and then looked at the news saying that Christmas special. I haven't seen this before. Got no alerts. Then I went and watched it, and it was very much true to the uh, late '80s early 90s, you know, sitcom vibe that it puts on. Uh, so, Jackie, do you watch Bo- BoJack Horseman? No, I haven't seen it. I've actually seen a floating on Netflix uh, a while, and I've considered watching it, but nobody's convinced me yet, so, hmm. Well, I mean, the thing I enjoy about it, it's like one of the first shows I've ever seen that's explicitly about depression. Huh. Like, it's sort of, because he's this Hollywood star, and you wonder, why is he acting in such a self-destructive way? And at first, you think he's like, you know, just this self-involved jerk, which he is. But it's also blatantly obvious that he's suffering from some kind of depression. And it's sort of about, like, how it's not just being sad and mopey all the time. It's being angry. It's being – so it's, it's a little more nuanced and more balanced. And it also has a nice bunch of, you know, jokes and throwbacks to, to the 90s. I think his manager is a cat. So, of course, her um, her ringtone is uh, the Jellicle song from the Cats musical. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that actually sounds a lot more complex than I was expecting. So maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it's like it's like more than meets the eye. Like at first, it's sort of be like about celebrity, but really, it, it's sort of you can go deep with that show. Yeah, yeah, it go it goes some places. And I'm uh, we're gonna go sportsy for a moment. I am happy to announce that the U.S. women's soccer team has advanced to the women's World Cup finals. So I, I need to check and see when that game is. But uh, yay! 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 Hooray. USA! 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 USA. USA. <laughs> well, that chant actually worked out pretty well. Usually, we all chant together; it's all like mixed and jumbled. But you guys are almost exactly spot on. <laughs> oh God! Like, like yesterday, we tried seeing "Happy Birthday" to Jack. Be, by the way, happy belated birthday! It was happy thanks. birthday, Jaga. Thank you. We tried singing to him on uh, on Xbox Live while we were playing Destiny, and it worked out terribly. <laughs> it was as it was as bad as you would imagine, and it, and it was wonderful. Yeah. This is. Work. Why my idea of a karaoke podcast never took off. <laughs> that sounds so fun, though. Wouldn't it be? If you found a way to do it in real time and have it all sync up, I think you could make a go, go of it. Yeah. Oh, God. So, 
a lot of people aren't gonna gonna understand this next bit, and I don't care. Robot House Rock Band Karaoke oh is my gonna be so fucking God, I'm awesome. So excited! So excited! I am so glad that I think we're probably gonna get Rock Band bo Four before that, and I am just I am so stoked. I am so excited that I'm considering seeing if I can fit my microphone stand in my carry-on luggage, so that we you know can really feel like rock stars there. I have. It's so funny you mentioned that. I'm driving and I'm and I'm thinking of bringing some of my boom mics nice. and stuff. So you can, so those of us who can can play and sing at the same time. Nice. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh man, if I could do karaoke to any song, it would be the "They Might Be Giants" version of "Bills, Bills, Bills" by Beyonce. <laughs> I, I I I caught it randomly on AV Undercover. Like someone posted it to their Facebook wall, and I saw it. And it's just sort of their classic nerd rock. And it's just their nerdy, wheezy voices up against Beyonce's lyrics. Oh, that's rough. I haven't heard that. that actually, Rock Band is, is very lacking in any They Might Be Giants. Wow, that sucks. I mean, that's that's perfect. Constantinople, I would do. So, I, I, let me tell you, the number of, of They Might Be Giant songs in Rock Band, zero. Yep. The number of They Might Be Giant songs in all the Just Dance games, one. Hmm. Constantinople. Of course. Yeah. I can see that. It's very danceable. <laughs> That's, That's it, debatable. It, 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 they certainly well, have for, food. For they they might be it. giant song. It's pretty danceable. <laughs> Man, and that, all those other bands, like the Streaming Females did a cover of something. And there was this band, I forget, did like a cover of We Got the Beat by Go Go's. Only they changed the, the lyrics to Give Us the Weed, which I thought was pretty clever. <laughs> I saw some, something recently, uh, Beyonce at a recent award ceremony um, doing a live performance and suddenly her music was synced up with the chicken dance music. <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen that one? I, I haven't seen that one. I have seen her uh, single ladies video, Sync to DuckTales. Yeah, that, that, was, that was phenomenal. But the, yes. chi the chicken dance one is so fucking spot on the beat. It's disturbing. A recommended view list. I feel like we're a YouTube <laughs> review podcast at this point. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this video? Have you seen that video? Now, if you don't know what to watch on YouTube, listen to our show. We'll tell you. We're whatever we, we say we are. Exactly. I'm just going to put this here for later. Just, just so you guys have it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The inevitable podcast war between Chris Hardwick and Jesse Thorne. When it comes, I don't know which side I'll choose. Maybe I'll play both sides against each other and be, and be the traitors executed at the end. I mean, that's obviously the best way to go. Yeah. Especially if you can avoid execution. Get oh, them no. to execute each other. There you go. Then I'll be the head of Maximum Nerdist. There you go. <laughs> so what are you listening to these days, Jackie? Really not much. Uh, I've actually been way too busy for any kind of podcast. We tend to listen to, my husband and I tend to listen to uh, podcasts or books on tape when we're traveling. Okay. And uh, most recently, we've been listening to um, the Game of Thrones books because it's just easy and nice when you're traveling. And before that was Serial. Uh, we also listen to a lot of Bill Maher because um, I'm, I'm a big fan of real time with Bill Maher. So, okay. And, of course, Nerdist here and there. It really depends on what, uh, uh, who he's interviewing at the time, though. Right. That's why we took sort of guests, for the most part, out of the equation, at least, like, promoting and stuff like that, because we found we would have, like, the huge spikes when there was a huge guest, and that none of those people would come back the following week. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so it's just more fun to be consistent and be fun and to have something you can put in your, your ears for 60 minutes and be entertained. Yeah. Mildly. But i got to say, one of the most logistical... The biggest logistical challenges we've had recently is trying to get together a fucking Game of Thrones spoiler cast. And we finally got one together the other night that I still need to post uh, with me and, uh, and Oboe. But we were supposed to have our good friend Jules on. And it ended up where I was out. So this was on Saturday. So this was after Jurassic World. And so after Jurassic World, we're like, well, what do you want to do now? Well, let's go to the game store because it just moved to a bigger new location and hang out. So we went to the game store and played board games for a while. 
And then we went and had uh, Freddy's Frozen Custard, and then I was like, oh, crap, i got to get home if I'm going to be in time for this for the spoiler cast that we were doing. So I get home at around 11, and poor Jules, it was already midnight for her. She's like, I am so sleepy. I'm doing this one raid in Destiny, and then I'm going to bed. I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and it, and it kind of sucks, because I think Jules would bring, or I definitely would have brought a, uh, a very unique uh, uh, point of view on some of that stuff. But next season, we're probably what I'm probably going to do is just be a real slave driver about it and just do one every two weeks, no matter who I can get. There you go. And so. and since you would have, uh, since we have a bunch of Game of Thrones fans here, and by a bunch I mean, well, me and Jackie, <laughs> then <laughs> I'll have a lot more options of people to pull from if if people aren't available. Yeah. I guess at some point I should catch up with the show. We're Only four seasons behind. Oh wow! Yeah, I well, watched like on and off. You've done yourself season. a big disservice by listening to the spoiler cast because we get into it. Oh, listen to them, as I have done, <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nuts. But I mean, honestly, those things get out like crazy. Like you hear about anything that happens on Game of Thrones. If anyone sneezes on Game of Thrones, you know two seconds later. Yeah. Even if you don't watch the show, so. A lot of the big plot stories, major points. I mean, I know the characters. I have some basic concepts of it. It's one of those weird shows where it's like fantasy, and everyone expects, who's like not nerdy or whatever expects me to be into it. And I'm like, eh, don't really watch. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Especially on TV. And it's like, yeah, that's what I keep hearing. And then I'll just rather go back to watching, like, um, I don't know, Party Down for the fifth time. Oh, I still need to watch Party Down. Oh. It's I... good. No, go ahead. I think it's better if you worked in some sort of like um, you know re- restaurant or catering service if you have or or, or waiter like you kind of get that vibe, you understand a little better. I mean, I, I worked a coffee shop, but I mean, I just liked it all the, the whole cast. If there wasn't a bad member on there, I mean, you look at every, what everyone's doing now. Like Lizzie Kaplan's doing big films. Uh, Martin Starr is on Silicon Valley. Um, you know, Adam Scott's and everything these days. Uh, I actually have worked in. Uh in, in the service industry for a long time and funny that it kind of makes me think of an anecdote because we were talking about working at home earlier um, so I worked at this Italian restaurant for a few years while I was going to college and you know it was a typical working in a restaurant kind of nonsense and there was you know the various people that would come in and out of the service industry like like that happens Typically, you know, you have somebody that will work a couple of months and then you never see them again. Some of the work a few months and then disappear and then come back again, that sort of thing. So there's, there's this one chick that, for the life of me, I can't remember her name. It was probably Lauren because we had eight Laurens. Mm. Um, she worked there for a little while and I, she was nice. We weren't friends, but we never had any kind of disagreement at all. Until? Until... <laughs> Uh, she stopped working. Actually, I think we both stopped working there uh, at this point. And I had transitioned into working at home. And, of course, you guys know that, for one, I'm a big fan of working at home. And, for two, I have a huge problem with sticking my foot in my mouth randomly in conversations and not knowing how to retract it. So I run into this chick at, at the grocery store just randomly out of the blue a few months later and um, she says, hey, what are you doing these days? And I tell her, well, I work from home, and this is what I do, and it's nice because I don't have to deal with coworkers around me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's wow. just this pregnant pause here, and she's just faking a smile like, well, it was great running into you. And I'm like, fuck, 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 what can I say? I can't <laughs> save this, damn it. <laughs> Hawk words, if ever there were one. Seriously, <laughs> Actually, hawk word. <laughs> hashtag, yeah, hash, hashtag hawk words take flight. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to see that. If you are out there and, uh, and you do that hashtag, I will send you something. <laughs> hawk words take flight. Hashtag. <laughs> if I see that in, on Twitter here. I feel like every week we have at least one t-shirt idea. Oh, my God. I need, yeah, we probably need to write that one down. I mean, Company first- meeting. <laughs> Emergency company meeting. I think that could be turned into a bird with arms. The Hawkward bird. I think so. Yeah. So, beefy arms, does this bird work out? Does the bird not care so much? No, this is the Hawkward bird. It's got to be some stringy arms that are, like, 
you know, the, uh, the prom floating arm syndrome, prom photo sl floating arm syndrome, that kind of awkward. Gotcha. That does make sense. I actually took a, uh, a hover hand picture at the, at the RT side quest charity auction a couple of years ago with our good friend Tiffany. And it's funny because she, she is normally a very huggable person. I mean, she just, she loves hugs and, and stuff. So taking a hover hand picture with her was, was pretty funny. <laughs> give it, give it who both of us are. Yeah. Both very huggable. So how does uh, RTX look for this year, guys? Uh, I, I have a bunch of work to do, and I haven't done any of it. Hmm. We have two panels this year, which is really exciting. Um, all I have to do is book a flight at this point and uh, make sure that my accommodations are uh, compensated fairly. I have an arra arrangement has been made, suffice it to say. And uh, unfortunately, no wife this time, but, um, but maybe that's for the best. Yeah. Well, not because I don't like spending time with my wife, but just because, you know, to immerse her in this world. She went to Uncon, to Toronto. So she met a whole bunch of people there. And it was convenient because she's living in Buffalo, and, uh, you know, Toronto's right there. But I think to fly out and do that kind of thing when you're kind of immersed entirely in the other person's, like, world, like, for a long period of time, I mean, unless you're really into the, the convention and stuff, I can kind of see her hanging back. Like, the same way if she was doing something, you know, pharmacy related or something, I'd probably be like, you know, I, I'd go if you want me to go. But if she said, you don't have to go, I'd be like, cool, I'll play video games. Yeah, especially with something like uh, Rooster Teeth Proud, which you've been a part of for, you know, a decade there. Oh, over a decade. Oh, yeah. gosh. Thank Way to date me there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, uh, it's, uh, Jackie is unlike a lot of other people we have on the show because she also has that pedigree. Yeah. And she's also been around for, for as long. Yeah. And getting my my husband into it was a little bit strange, but... It was inevitable because where we lived uh, previously seemed to be like anybody who's tra uh, traveling up or down uh, I-95 stopped through our town. So anytime any of these rooster teeth people were going through that side of the country, suddenly they were staying at our house for you know a night or five or two weeks or something. <laughs> so he would slowly meet all these people here and there, and then you know. Uh, like uh, Roadblock mentioned earlier when we were in New York and all of those people in one spot and Drew was just kind of thrown to the wolves there, but he survived. Well, sure. People, <laughs> people are adaptable, I yeah. guess. But, uh, but yeah, I think I'll work our way easier into it and stuff because there's other stuff in Austin. If I were to do it, I'd probably have to do like a half and half thing where I'd only go to the convention like one day and then the next day I'd probably just hang out in Austin with her and do like things she'd want to do yeah. or go to San Antonio or something. That way it's like there's something for both of us and not just me dragging her from place to place being like, ooh, I want to go on that ride. I want to get this autograph. <gasps> Shannon McCormick! And actually, I, I'm a big fan of Shannon McCormick, but I just used an example there. It we seems like Washington. PAX South would be some, or, or any of the PAXs would be a really good like be, deal for medium, something like right? that because yeah. yeah because i feel like at this point you could do half a pax and still be okay so if i don't go to india next in january the idea is you know go to san antonio for yeah. pax south I'll, I'll probably be there that could work um but if again if we don't go to india which is looking more and more likely well we, and and kind of going to rtx uh, back to rtx a bit uh, I do have a couple of panels that I really do need to work on. Uh, I need to make sure that all of our stuff for the Glip Shark panel is good. I, I'm glad that I don't have to really do anything for the D and D panel. That's that's on Lauren's plate, so that's good. Yep. And then uh, for the photography panel, I need to get with my panelists and say, "Hey, this is what we kind of want to do. Uh, if you have some pieces of work, let give them to me so I can uh, put them in the PowerPoint." And then for the, the last panel that I'm on, I, we just had a meeting last week about it, and I straight up told them, so I'm going to talk, but I might be drunk. <laughs> might? At least Let, you I them. doubt that you won't be. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, like I've said before, I'm going to endeavor to be. And in, in our little house, it's, it's going to be pretty easy to do. We're going to have uh, – we have a cake fridge, so – our good friends uh, Amanda and Josie are going to be providing a pony cake. I have been instructed to get materials for mimosas and Harnold Palmers, which is iced tea, vodka, and lemonade. 
And so that those are going to be our drinks du jour in the house. And like I said, I, I have very strict instructions to to acquire those materials and a lot of them. Sweet. We will have to make an excursion to that one really awesome place that makes those uh, Bloody Marys with bacon in them. Oh, uh, oh uh, Casino that, de Camino. Is that the one that has taquitos in it? Oh, yes. It's a, yes. Yeah. Amanda was telling us the story there at was o- my wedding. Okra in there. there was okra in there too, man. That thing eats like a meal. Yeah, that's what she was saying. She said that you guys were at this place and she was looking at um, the Bloody Mary and how weirdly expensive it was. Uh, but she went ahead and ordered it and then it was just an entire meal in this cup and then she throws in and there was a goddamn taquito in there. And it's, I mean, it was so classic Amanda, but... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It sounded amazing. Yeah, it's one of those, you know, Austin, I, I love that town. I like hanging out there. I mean, maybe it's because I'm only there three days a year. A year. But uh, it's a fun little spot. I mean, weird towns like all throughout America that have their own charm, whether it's in Austin or a uh, or Portland or in Asheville or, or what have you, or immediate to a lesser extent. Not as cool as other places, but it's where I call home. Uh, Austin and Asheville are actually uh, sister cities. Uh, and we have a lot of friends that live in uh, in Austin, and when we were living in Asheville... We would hear all these stories and people say, oh, this is so weird. This is so awesome. Like, that's, that's every day here, too. Like, we're, hmm. we live in the same lives. Just one's in the mountains and one's in the desert. Mountains versus desert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess that's true. I guess home is wherever you, you hang your hat. Yep. Yeah. And my home is still on the Internet somewhere. <laughs> Depends on where you are. Where can we find you on the Internet these days, Jackie? Uh, well, I spend a lot of time on Twitter, which is uh, Twitter backslash Jackie the Robot. Um, I do have a site that's just for my artwork. That's uselessprogress.com. But between us, I don't update it nearly as often as I should because I feel like when people go to see artwork, maybe they don't want to see birds with arms all over the place. <laughs> so... Don't tell me I what I only, want. I can only think of one person that uh, that fits that description. Oh, Babby. <laughs> and there's also a uh, nerds in Babeland. Uh, whenever something cool and geeky or uh, interesting and geeky happens, I typically write on there. Um, most recently, that party I went to in Los Angeles, uh, the pre E3 party, which was also the Walking Dead video game launch party. Uh, you know Let's before we sign off. I wanna I wanna talk about that a little bit because first of all I feel chipped because poor Drew, it was <laughs> was talking about how you were gonna be on this stream. So I'm watching these str- this stream and I'm watching this tool, and who's who I guess is pretty and and read stuff, but she was kind of boring. Oh, the one Real- wearing the Dragon Ball Z shirt. Yes. Yeah. And. All I wanted to see was my friend Jackie on the red carpet. And Drew was like, oh, because oh, I'm presuming that Drew was like messaging him and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, oh, she's here and she's at this point. She's at this point. And then when we finally saw Chains, I was like, oh, well, Jackie will surely be in the background. And then, nope, you were already inside. I'm like, god damn it. And did you turn it off at that point? Uh, as soon as Drew said you were inside, then yes. Okay, because that's when he texted me, and he's like, why don't you go out and walk on the red carpet? And I, I literally did. I was about three drinks in no! at that point. <laughs> I went out. And I actually, I walked the carpet once and did a total Miss America wave. <laughs> and then this really, really awesome chick that worked for uh, the company was like, hey, do you want me to get you get some pictures of you? And, and you can walk it again, and we'll make sure it's on the stream and everything. So, yeah, there were... There were lots of, there was lots of Jackie in there. <laughs> is is there a GIF video or something? <laughs> uh, they said there would be video of it. We haven't found any, um, but I might try to bug uh, Almir for it and see if he has a link to it. I've got a picture somewhere on my phone. I might have to upload that somewhere. I'm looking forward to that picture. I'm looking forward to. The, I'm actually looking at Usage Progress right now. I'm looking at your uh, your classic style, where it's like the monochrome color, but with the uh, the pencils and stuff. I love those. I mean, those date back way back in the day. Hey, thank you. I've actually been trying to get back into them because I mean, I've I've had a lot of life changes in the past year, so I haven't been very artistic, except again with the birds with arms. Um, so I've been trying to <laughs> ease my way back into these, but they're, they're hard to get back into them, especially if you haven't practiced drawing realistically in a while. 
I wouldn't know that from looking at your Janelle, Janelle Monet. Well, I'm guessing that is. Yeah, it, yeah, that was Janelle Monet. But that was actually at least a year ago, I think. Uh, well, I'm just like kind of scrolling up and down here. I'm like, it really caught my eye. <laughs> but we got to have you back on. I feel like the last two hours flew. They really did. Wow, it has been two hours. Yeah. But uh, but we'll catch you sometime in the future. Uh, our sound producer is Jonathan Cerna. I feel like I'm doing things. Hey, Jack, remember how you said you were going to pay me for this? I don't remember saying anything like that. God damn it. <laughs> Linnea Boyev does our music. Our announcer is the inimitable Bob Ball, a uh, voice actor. And uh, on behalf of myself, Jonathan Cerna, and the entire Glib Shark staff saying, well, this, well, saying good night, good health, and... Secret, secret, I got a secret. <laughs>